start the morning off with a bang. So, Adrian's out here in bare feet. And he woke me up. Hey. Brand new battery over here. He's just floating around in there. Premium's fire that sucker up. Oh. Oh, no. He Alright boys, see y'all. Alright, good luck. Good luck. Hope you guys don't get too wet. Good luck. Already an eventful morning this morning to start practice. Other than my boy Scott Martin, we actually get to practice and, and head into the ramp before it gets daylight. Even though we aren't going to start till late. But still, calling you out, Scott. But thankfully, everybody's here with uh, extra trucks where I can jump my truck off of DC stuff. Should be good to go, but we gotta go down that dirt road. Woo. Oh, buddy, how about that? It's like a rock, gravelly, clay mix. Leash always gets this, takes care of getting the Airbnbs, which she does an amazing job. So I'm not, honey, if you're watching this, I'm not calling you out. It just so happened that this would have been fine if it would have been the same conditions as it is, but it just so happened there's three to five inches of rain coming down the pipe. Hey, Mark almost didn't show up last night because he's got a white wrap on his boat this year. And he's like, uh-uh. Now, Mark only lives like 45 minutes away from Lake Point, so it's foggy. <laughs> While we were rushing to the lake, and it already looks like there's quite a bit of fog out there. Which, today is going to be a day to find fish, but you just don't know what's going to happen with possibly five inches of rain during one small duration of time causing flash flooding. Literally, that's what I said. All about like that process of, of how you, you have to use every little bit of information to your advantage. And what I mean by that is off of what I've seen on Google Earth and everything else, I sort of know the areas that are prone to getting really, really muddy or blown out. So that's something that just my prior um, research should help me in this point in time. So I'm going to try to stay away from those areas because I know it potentially is going to get too muddy. Um, so that's ultimately my goal for today is trying to run around. And even though those areas might be the best, most unbelievable thing to fish today, that's uh, you know it's obviously going to change. So sort of just got to prepare, think ahead. It is 7.30, time to go look around the pond. Throw a lipless crankbait a little bit, see if I can fire one up. It's a little shallower, two, three, four feet of water. Backlashes. It happens. I that one down there a little ways. Y'all think just because you're a pro angler, fish all the time, you don't get backlashes. That's not the case. You're always going to have backlashes. Biggest thing with a backlash is go all the way down the very last loop. That's the worst thing you can do with fluorocarbon. What'll end up happening is you'll end up breaking, it'll kink the fluorocarbon and you'll end up breaking off a big one or breaking off your lure. Should be a couple bass right here. In the next 24 hours. Well, I tried to sort of see if 
if there were some fish offshore, I felt like that would be like a little bit of a sneakier deal, but it would be also more susceptible if the water got dirty, those fish would scatter out. So spending a little bit of time just to make sure there's no like tons of fish that are out there off the bank. Cause obviously I love the fish offshore, but uh, I also understand that you can't get caught up with just one thing. So, um, you know, I'm gonna look around and do some other stuff real quick here. Probably go shallow and maybe fish around some, I don't, you know, this is the thing, this is pretty far south, so they could start to set up to go spawn, but I wouldn't think I'd be this early, but you never know. a spot out of them not what we need this week's a two pound minimum so that's not a non-scorable right there i just wanted to see what was up i seen some of my graph and i wanted to know if, what the heck was going on because i'm throwing a swim bait in there i'm throwing a, throwing a spinner bait i was like i haven't got a bite yet i was like maybe there's something to it i don't know I wanted to sort of throw that drop shot in there and see if it spots back. There's no way there's bait out here on this stuff. Exactly what I want to see, but there's got to be another way to get them a bite other than the main drop shot. Maybe a DT10. Right there. First spot of the day. There you go, just like that. <laughs> Little accent spinner bait. There you go, three pounder. Choked that crack and crawl that little swim jig. Switch it up, do a green pumpkin with a little black. It's chunky, but I don't think it's scoreable. I'm not, I just want to know what, what this fish will go. Two pound minimum. Take the trusty old rapper scale. That fish would be a 113. Woof. Non scoreable. About, about a 15 inch.
So I just got some of these new Guggen swim jigs in and jigs in in general. I'll tell you one quick trick, it's the little black and blue and the water's pretty dirty, you could obviously tell. Black and blue is probably gonna be a pretty big deal. Chartreuse white, black blue, typical stuff. My favorite trailers, of course, crack and crop. But this is a big deal. So a lot of times, you know, black, black, blue, match it up, it's fine. Probably in this water color, it's fine. But if the water gets dirtier and I wanna just dress him down a little bit, I can go to like a Bama bug or just a straight like uh, blue baby and I can sort of like fish that black and blue jig a little bit more in clear water because I have the both both of those. One of my favorite things to do is throw something green pumpkin or very natural with a black and blue. Um, and that, that it tends to be a better deal when like one to two foot of water. So right now I'm gonna probably just go with black and blue and black and blue. But, and if it's really, really muddy, then you gotta try to throw something with sapphire blue trailer. But, uh, or this black, I mean black and blue would be fine, but. It's got a lot of sapphire blue towards the top. So you gotta think when that fish is looking at it, a lot of it's black and then every time it shakes, you're gonna see that blue. Should be a pretty good little deal. Uh, it's not been an easy day. First day so far, midday update. I've not fished a ton. I've caught a couple bass off the bank. One, one bass, well, two bass off the bank. Um, one scoreable, one non-scoreable, and then I've caught a non-scoreable up shallow. I, I really feel like the shallow water deal is going to be the main deal. I just, you know, I'm trying to keep it. First part of the practice, wanted to sort of keep it honest. Ooh, super shallow right here. I mean, water probably come up. To tournament though so just trying to sort of keep them all honest obviously the shallow water bite's gonna be the deal like i mean more than likely with three to five inches of rain spinner bait vibrating jig square bill like that's going to be like the deal obviously i love fishing off the bank but this water's like a foot of visibility and with that much rain coming i don't think it's gonna get any better <laughs> i've learned over the years when you're lost especially in the springtime Pick up a confidence bait, um, or a few of them, put a few rods on the deck, you can swim jig, in this case, spinner bait, chatter bait, just a flipping jig, probably a square bill, and just go, and just go. Go down the bank, see if you can get a bite, and I'll fish the mouth, I'll start on the main, and I'll work my way into a spawning area and try to get on a little pattern. A lot of times what'll happen is you'll get a bite the first half, you'll get a bite the last half you're getting a bite in the very back of it and that'll clue you in on what those fish are doing so that's something that really has helped me in the springtime now more so in practice i try to do this or if you're lost in the tournament i'll throw it down and try to sort of get an idea of what they're on because a lot of times what happens what you think they might be on might not be the deal and all of a sudden one bites your stuff and you're clued in a lot of derbs i sat there had good derbies because of it Good tournament because of You know what's crazy? Last time I was here on Lake Eufaula, I uh, I won one of the cup events. It's actually the first cup event I've won. It's in the fall. And this is how crazy this place is, is. You know, a lot of times there there was grass out in 15 foot of water. There's like no grass. Like literally this whole area had grass just, just a few years ago crazy how year by year lakes change or I, I assume they had to have sprayed it but I'm not sure yeah. That's the problem is like you put all this work in and if it wasn't going to be raining you could cr catch them out deep but maybe catch some out deep but it just and you can mix in the shallow stuff and you can sort of balance around but it's just all you just might as well throw it all out the window you just don't you just don't know and that's what's so crazy about it. you just you're gonna have to make adjustments i don't want to get locked into one thing i've, I've 
I'm throwing a vibrating jig on the bank. I'm throwing a trap. Flipped around. I swim a jig in some grass. I'm just constantly looking for something. I've not found the magic deal, you know? And I just keep bouncing around because that's what I love to do. That is the key, like, for me, I like fishing from mid lake down because that gives me, I can fish dock, I can fish rock, I can fish pockets, I can fish creeks, I can fish grass. That's my game plan was going into this whole thing. I'm, I'm gonna stick to it. I'm probably gonna stay from mid lake down and I'm gonna, it is what it is. If I catch them, I catch them. You know, if I don't, I don't. But I, I, at least I'm doing, you know, giving myself the opportunity to, to really fish the way I really like to. And I feel like this is a big deal. When it's really tough, you need to sort of lock down with a couple things you're confident in or a couple techniques. Or, and for me, it's not locking down with anything. It's like going and running around and fishing like a madman. So that's my comfort zone. And that's why, you know, I chose to, to at least start my practice down this way. There's a boat right there. Come here. Somebody just sunk their boat. Oh, we're just hanging out. spot right here I don't know if there's it looked like they were on it pretty good but couldn't for sure tell so I'm gonna throw this crank crank a little bit and see if I can get a bite problem is this is just so susceptible of being just trash some sort of like I'm all worried them like they weren't like grouped up grouped up but there's a couple of them down there so I figured I'd pick up that DT14 see if I can't catch a catch me one Fish Friday, I think I'm probably gonna have a chance to catch them. Okay, let's roll. Oh. Put him up. Dang, man. We catch him suckers like probably off the bank. Got another one on DT14. I don't know what it is. Oh, white. I've seen some fish right here. I don't know what they are, but I wanted to see if they were bass or white bass. water putting the rods away got some gas i think we ran 25 gallons out today so decent amount of running but uh and of course it rained a lot a lot and even going to rain more tomorrow let's head to the house what a freaking jurassic park but yet there's not freaking giants at the end of the rainbow <laughs> All right, just got back to the house, took a shower. Oh, I'm dry. Feel warm again. Boy, it's wet. It's yeah. wet. Ooh, there we go. Gotta get better at the selfie camera. Oh yeah, I just took a shower for eight hours. <laughs> but, it, but it wasn't warm. No. It wasn't hot. Like 55. Yeah. It's wetter in it. <laughs> well, anyway, so we're about to grab some bite to eat. Oh, boys. It's supposed to rain another three inches tomorrow. Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but it didn't rain that much today. No, it but it's, it's going to rain a it's lot. Rain. It's raining all, all night, night long. Yeah, it's all, all night long, long, and then all that I'm expected to It never fails, man. <laughs> See, they're going to be a cold front, or a uh, tsunami, or a monsoon, or a hurricane. A tsunami? Yeah. Never fails. It's going to be an earthquake or something. Hey, what, what, hey, what's that chicken look like? Oh, that's on fire right now. <laughs> you should have loaded him down with some tone or something like that. He's straight. Oh, go ahead. Wait, and eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I don't know. It's been 12 hours in that basket. I think I want to get sober and fish again. <laughs> that's right. Pull on over. Adrian and DC are just about to leave. This is actually 5 30. March, we're still in bed. Hey, Mark! I just making sure he's up. Making sure he's up. All right, so this is the deal. We can't talk to each other about how we're doing it or how we're catching them or any of that stuff. But all I can tell you is this. Them dudes are leaving that early. It might not be that easy. <laughs> I just got a vibe. It's not that easy. So, updated forecast for the day. Thursday, February 6th. Strong thunderstorms likely. Storms could contain damaging winds. Okay. High, 73. All right, that's nice. It's like 73 right now. Winds, 15 to 25 with gust 30 plus. Chance of rain, 100%. One to two inches of rain expected. Also, on Weather Channel app, we got this thing right here. It says tornado watch in effect. Sounds about right. Perfect for day two of practice. <laughs> Pulling up to the boat ramp. So my game plan yesterday was was not a bad bad day of fishing, but it wasn't easy either. You know, I, I sort of mixed it up, went shallow, fished deep, but try to sort of figure out you know what stage the fish were in. There were, seemed like there's fish doing a lot of different things. The water's already pretty muddy. You know, there's still a chance that somebody could catch some off the bank as well. But you know, today is more so going to be trying to fish shallow. I don't know if we're going to get as much rain as, as we really initially anticipated so a lot of these creeks aren't going to be might not be as blown out as i think they were going to get so i was sort of staying away from the major creek so i'm going to look more so on the major creek side today the backs of the creeks are the first place to clear up later in the week and you got to think multiple days you know, of competition you know we have four or five days um, before the knockout round so that water could clean up just good enough where it's good stain and catch them back there too so just sort of looking a little bit as well um, is going to be my, my game plan for today because I think you're going to really have to fish fish by the seat of your pants, which I love to do in this tournament. So that is the plan for day two of practice, but then I think I'm going to try to get off this water right around when that, that storm comes in because it looks a little bit gnarly. Eesh. <laughs> Good day to fly a kite. Fixing me one of them days where you gotta wear two raincoats, raincoat over a raincoat. <laughs> hey, starting about 10 o'clock. You better be hiding underneath the dock somewhere. Jeez, All right, good there. It's just gonna be a little tough to film in these conditions. I'm not gonna be taking you guys along this morning, but I will let you guys know how it goes. We'll have a little mid-morning update. I'm gonna try to get off the water when that big sail comes through. Wish me luck.
T's. Hey, if you come to New Fall, Alabama, Willie T's, little wing spot, we're gonna check it out. Come on with us. This is a little not normal on a practice. Mm -hmm. Sorry. We rolled up to Willie T's, grabbed the hook bite, I was sitting there looking at the weather, the, the radar, and it broke up. So I'm like, no, we gotta go. So we ate the wings, which were phenomenal. On a smaller side, but still really good. Goldinger sauce. I'm gonna head up towards Lake Point and drop in for 30 minutes to an hour. I might drive. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. We're gonna see. I don't know. Well, midday update, it's about 12 o'clock. I got off the water. A little bit sketchy out there right now. There's a giant storm I'll show you guys here in a second. It's definitely gonna be a little sketchy here in a second. So I figured I'd get off the water, grab my D, regroup, come with a game plan, and then go from there. Did not get on a whole lot. Sort of balance between that shallow, mid-depth, you know, deep. Just trying to, just trying to figure it out. I think I eliminated a lot of water. A lot of times this is a good thing. But man, I just been wondering how this how this rain's gonna affect this place. Rain keep falling on my head. Oh put them frog togs on and bat down the hatches. Nobody wants. Nobody wants wet wrist and a wet shirt that's how it works this is what it looks like right now guys it's pretty nasty up there but see i think what's going to happen is it's going to split there you go see about two o'clock something's going down that's what's up y'all think it's not going to be that it looks bad i was going to i was going to keep y'all asleep let's keep y'all asleep y'all thought it was like if it was going to go like straight across it'd be bad but it's Skis and something. Time to go find something. That was a quick one. Ooh, hello, wet. Water was too dirty. Too not, dirty. not too dirty, but it was just like, no one went on to see. All right, so this is the deal. I got a quick tip, quick tip. Hire a camera guy. When it rains like this, my guy like Brody, my guy picks me up and we go ahead and we roll on down to the next spot. So you go to stop, drop me in, stop. Hey, it's the deal, I'm telling you. Competitive advantage. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, it's, it's, been a, it's been a good one today because if I had to run in that, I went to the main lake for a second, looked, Looked around a little bit, I'm like, nah, I'm not feeling it. Dipped on back and said, let's on chop on down the pond. We got a A Ron. What what you doing out here in the middle of the lake, man? I was like, what? The first sputter, I was like, we got you. All right. Did I owe you like seriously big, like a big box for dinner or something? <laughs> something really nice. Is there room for a gas can? I don't have room for a freaking drink. I, I didn't have a gas can on the hoop. I can't believe it. I thought I had 10 gallons at least left. I was thinking I had plenty of fuel. I didn't think about getting low. I thought I swear I put 20 in it last night. It should have been 15. I thought I had like 35, 37 gallons. Must have figured it wrong. I'm pretty sure you figured it wrong. I, mean, I broke it. I put 11, 12 hours on it so far and just got it a few days ago. It would have been, it would have been like 9 o'clock before I got back, probably. Aaron. Thanks, bro. No problem, buddy. You, you got it. All right, get your get your get your phone. Don't forget your phone right there. It's part of it. It happens. All, hey, it happened to me last week. <laughs> all right, dude. Be safe. I'm getting back. Good luck tomorrow. <laughs> oh, hey, Ron. Oh, hey, Ron. He's like, man, you keep, you keep. He said, like, you got room enough to, to keep your, keep a gas tank in there, man. And he's like, I'm like, no. 
<laughs> don't bring the five gallon gas tank. Brody got it. Bro, I, I owe you a lobster dinner. You owe me and Brody a lobster dinner. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the thing. Let's try to get dry. Yeah. Talk about a wet day. Making sure I lock everything down. The thing is so easy to get sidetracked and not lock everything down. So, whew. Woo! My two rain jackets didn't work. Straight up soaking wet, bro. Dude, I, I, I have never came so close to literally getting stranded. So Google Earth is always deceiving. I, I tried to squeeze through this little pinch point in the woods and raging current going through it. And then it opened up to a nice backwater. Well, I got through it, tried to turn around, literally couldn't do anything. I had to jump out, tie a rope to my waist and literally had to crawl through that joker. Can't escape the grind. It's tough everywhere. So we'll just see how it works out. It reminded me of the day when I was younger and I flipped my down boat. Oh, scary, bro. Oh, it's winding down for the night. I kick back in the lazy boy. Boys. Hey, a couple days of hard practice. I'll tell you what. I don't know if I know, I know about anything else that really gets me like that tired. It's like, it's like a mental, oh. and if, you know what I'm saying? Like you're just mentally drained, I feel like. Dude, I'm so freaking tired, I can go to bed right now. <laughs> I, know, I, was, I was thinking about it. Literally took a shower for two days straight. You know when you're just like chilled to the bone? Like you're you just. can't shake it. No. So what we need to do now is just chill right here and watch and watch TV on that awesome TV right there. Two. Oh, gee. I, I still got one of them. Is this, have any of you guys ever watched anything on one before? Yeah, Dad, I watched. Are you kidding me? One of those? I mean, that's like a 60s model, but 70s. That's probably a 60s model. So we're just chilling. We got off day tomorrow. MDJ is not here. He go back to the house. He fishes tomorrow. I'll tell you what's gonna feel so good to sleep in though. Yeah, we're gonna sleep in tournament day too. We don't start at eight o'clock. What the heck you been up to in the off season, Adrian? I, I can promise you, I didn't catch no bass. <laughs> hey, this guy hey, is hey, not hey, caught a bass. Man, this is this is not a lie. I didn't catch a bass prior to yesterday. I think it was like third week of September. Oh, Literally have not. Man, you ain't got that itch like me. I've got. Hey, I literally would drive hours to go catch a bass. Mm -hmm. I've caught so many. I promise you, I've caught more bass than any of these guys this year. What's your total for this year? Okay. I've probably caught total. well over five hundred this year. Oh, five hundred? I probably said yeah, probably four hundred for real. I had like four or five days already in January. Where I catch a hundred a day. She. I'd have a guy trip, we'd catch like a 90, 85, 75. No, we ain't talking about, hey, we ain't hey. talking about crappie, we're talking about bass. So I'll tell you this right now. So if you're looking for a guy trip to catch 100, DC's your man. <laughs> Every time I go with him, the we catch like three. Every time. It's unbelievable. It's un freaking believable. He'd be like, bro, come on down, we're gonna freaking smash. We, me and Russ just caught 120 of them. I'm like, all right, cool, I slide up there. It's like two bites all day. I'm like, Hey, check this out. Here's exactly what what happens with him. I'll say, hey, buddy, it's, it's getting it's getting right. He'll be like, all right, I'm going to come down on Wednesday. This is on like a Monday. Tuesday, it will flood or be a giant cold front, kind of similar to this tournament. And I'll say, well, I don't think it's going to affect them that bad. You get out there, it's bombed out, maybe they're gone. I had fun every time we've gone. That's what it's all about. That's all that matters. But at the end of the day, you do owe me a, a legitimate guide trip. So if you're looking for a guide trip, Connell's not good at guiding me, but he's good at guiding other people. If you look at his Instagram, he's got spider bass all over it. Hit up my boy. Yeah, I'm really not lying. Like, I don't want Jacob thinking I'm lying. But like, <laughs> caught 85 plus fish today, and then after that, I'm like, I really only catch like seven, and I take a picture with him. <laughs> I really don't do that. So, this place is really good in like late March. Yeah. We fished two FLW tournaments here, right? Yeah. You catching the first one? Yeah, the first one, the first one was a shad spawn tournament. Yep. And then the second one. You caught him too. Yeah. Adrian's gonna catch him. Cause Adrian, I don't think you've not, not caught him. You yeah, haven't obviously. <laughs> obviously to you. the first for everything, man. I mean, that's pretty good though. So anyway, we're just, we're just winding down the night. Figured we would say what was up. It's been, uh, 
two interesting days of practice with more interesting days of the tournament. So we're gonna see tonight, just chilling, get some rest, rig some tackle tomorrow. I think I have one Toyota deal tomorrow. Gotta work, do a, a photo shoot. Might go make a couple casts at a little sneaky pond. We'll see. The only nice thing about fishing, not fishing day one, is being able to see what the what the score tracker does and how much weight is put on. Historically, from everything that I have, event that I fished, your first day after the front's okay. Your second day is horrendous. And we we got the second day. Yeah, not to mention there's going to be 120 boats on the pond. So the, so we have, that has an hour and a half jump on them. Man, that's not going to matter when it's 34 degrees. So there, there's another local tournament out, which is like part of it, obviously. We only have 40 guys fishing, but with all the rain, you know, it's probably going to fish a little bit smaller. There's areas that are dirty. Low-key going to suck. going to be tougher. It's going to be low-key going to suck. It's all good. Oh, I'm just going to lay back in this dang lazy boy and call it good. traffic control. I'm done. I have a whistle. Your turn.